Good morning all! Today I have a special guest with me, Labubu! Say hi to everyone! Hello! <laughs> hey, this is my new love! <laughs> okay! Yeah! Very cute, right? Yeah! So it's, it's farmer! Farmer, then behind later he will go do the farming already! Oh. So today I want to talk about when to sell your stocks or when to cut loss! Because recently, I think REITs have been sold down very sharply! In the recent results, Oh, I think investors were disappointed that their overseas asset underperformed. Uh, like MPACT, the Japanese asset uh, underperformed. Then for Maple Logistics Trust, MLT, the China assets uh, underperformed. So both of them sold down sharply. And uh, Bert, Bert asked me, Master, ah, should, should sell and cut loss or not? <laughs> ah, so, ah, yeah, Bert, Bert, ah, Bert, Bert, ah. So REITs, I believe, right, is the opportunity to buy. Previously, I bought 25,000 shares of CFA REIT uh, ETF uh, using my CPF OA, OA account at 77 cents. Then I show you all to buy also, ma. Then uh, I see comments, uh, some people say, wow, REITs are very negative. Uh, the high interest rate environment will kill them should wait for lower, wait for 72 cents or lower. The lowest was 73 cents. Then I tell Bert, Bert that it might not come so low. Lah, oh. you, you, you try to low ball, you might miss the boat. Then Bert, Bert missed the boat. Then it ran, uh, it started to rally even before the red card. Uh, REITs rally to, I think 86 cents was the recent pick for the CFA REIT ETF. Then at, when CFA REIT ETF was 85 cents, then uh, Bert, Bert asked, Master, ah, See, REITs going out at wow, boat living port eh. Now can buy or not? <laughs> that, I, that I tell you all in the live stream. Uh, 85 cents, don't chase ah. Uh. Wait for a pullback. If it pullbacks to 82 cents or 80 cents, you want to buy the dip. And now it has happened. I bought the dip at 82 cents. I will buy more at 80 cents. I will defend the 80 cent level for the CFA REIT ETF. So now I, I'm a buyer of REITs. Oh, I, I bought CFA ETF and I bought six uh, blue chip REITs uh, or CICT, FCT, MPACT, MLT, Suntech REIT and Kaper REIT. Yeah, so my portfolio for the Singapore market is uh, six blue chip REITs and the CFA ETF and I'm using cash. So far I deployed about 4,000 already. Yeah, so that, that's my initial start. Uh. Then every month I will put in $1,000 into this uh, REIT ETF to grow this portfolio. So hopefully 10 years later, it can be a, a six-figure portfolio, maybe 200,000 or 300,000 worth. That, that's my target. La. So that I can enjoy some passive income uh, when, when I'm in my 50s. So, uh, but, but ask me, Master, ah, when to sell? So so now I don't think it's, it's the time to sell. La. So, so but, but panic or oh, uh, miss the boat, chase high, bought at 85 cents. And now the CFA ETF pull back to 82, 81 cent. Then Baba asked me, Master, ah, CFA ETF, MLT, MPACT. Very disappointing, eh? Should cut loss and sell or not? <laughs> ah, yeah. So if, if you like that, ah, I think very hard to make money in the stock market. Ah. The, the psychology is not there. Ah. The investor mindset is not there. Should think from a business owner point, point of perspective. So there are situations that you will want to sell the stock. So let me share la, some, some of my stories in the past. Oh. So Master have been in the market for 16 years. So your feedback to me, you all like my stories. Eh. But most of my stories is in the uh, Singapore market. La. US market, I actually have very little experience. Uh, so maybe I start from the US market, since very, then later I go into the Singapore market. When I sell a stock, when to sell a stock. So I was in the US market from 2012 to 2015. 2012 was the European crisis, the debt crisis, uh, the peaks, uh, Portugal, Italy, uh, and, and Spain. They had a lot of debt, there was worries, then US and Europe sold down. So that's where I go into the US market. I bought five companies. I bought Apple as a tech stock. I bought Berkshire Hathaway, like, like an ETF. I bought Walmart, McDonald's uh, as a consumer stocks. And I bought uh, Bank of America as banks. So consumer tech and banks and financials. So usually these three areas is where I'm strong at. Oh, consumer, financial, tech, and property. Usually I'm good at this area, but Singapore already had uh, property stocks already. So I go to the US, it's for tech, uh, consumers, and financial. Yeah, so the five companies, Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, Walmart, McDonald's, and Bank of America. That was my portfolio in 2012. 
Then the US market subsequently uh, went, 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 went up uh, over the next three years. Uh, the European crisis was soft. Lah. So they took a haircut uh, and then we were in a zero interest rate environment. So they avoided the, the, the crisis and everything was looking rosy. So in 2015, because I was still like quite quite amateur, quite new, I decided to take profit on the US market. I sold all my US stocks because I listened to Doomsday Pawn that the US market was gonna crash. So I took a 50 over percent gain. So that was quite good, you know, like you three years, in three years you make more than 50%. Because in the US market, you don't go for dividends. There's a 30% dividend tax. So my original objective in the US market is to make capital gains. So I made a 50% capital gain which is like 15 to 20 percent per year or over the three years then i took took the gain i sold then i think that oh if it crash then i'll go back in and, and buy lower so when i sold all my us shares in 2015 the crash never came it continued to boo over the next five years to 2020 then we had the virus the lockdowns then the us market crash so the the lesson learned here is that uh uh, yes, it's okay to sell to take profits, but if you want to buy back lower, it might be challenging. Uh, they might not, that the pullback, the crash might not come. Then, then you, then you hold on to cash, you miss the gains. So I sold that, I, I took the money and went back to the Singapore market. Then I lose out on the forex. I convert to US dollar. Then I, I play the US market three years. Then I come back to the Singapore market. I convert US dollar to Sing dollar again. So it's also a bit stupid. So I learned from it. So when you switch a currency, I right, try to don't switch around. If you switch a currency to US dollar, whole US dollar for 10 or 20 years. Like now I switch my currency to Hong Kong dollar. I'm not going to swap my Hong Kong dollar for Sing dollar. Or I'm going to hold the Hong Kong dollar there for 10 or 20 years. Don't switch around your, your currency. So it's okay to sell to take profits, but uh, you might not get back in uh, the, the, at a lower price. Don't, don't try to uh, time the market. So like now the US market right is at 30 times earnings. I think it's the good time to sell because it's overvalued. It's, it's time to take profits in the US market because it's overvalued. But when I sold in 2015, the US market wasn't really overvalued. It was, I would say like slightly expensive or fairly priced. But I listened to the doomsday pawn. Yeah. So that was my experience in the US market. Lah. So, so uh, that, that, that taught me a lesson. So coming back to the Singapore market, right? In the past, uh, post the GFC, uh, the global financial crisis was 2008. Then uh, 29 was a sharp rally. 2010, I was still looking for bargains. And early 2010, I found Starhub. Starhub was trading at $2. Because a lot of people went for the capital gains, they, they buy the banks, all this. Then the telcos, like, it's more defensive, it, it's left out in the bull market. Then ten cent, uh, then uh, it was paying 10 cents of dividend. Eh, no, it was paying 20 cents of dividend. 5 cents every quarter. I bought Starhub at $2 level and it paid 5 cents dividend every quarter. 20% dividend. So it was a 10% dividend yield. Oh, I bought 5,000 shares. Uh, so I put in about 10,000 Sing dollar. So I held it all the way because just because my uh, cost is so low and I'm getting a 10% dividend yield. So over the next five years, I think 2014, 2015 like that, it peaked at about $5 because uh, everyone was hungry for dividends. Dividend investing became popular. Starhub was trading at 4% dividend yield. Yeah, $5 price there. Then I think that was the best moment to sell, but I did not sell. Because clearly Starhub was uh, overvalued. And I had one concern is that the gearing was very high. The, the gearing was more than 100% already. So it keep borrowing money because as a telco, right, uh, you are expansionary. You need to bid for the spectrum, all this. So I found you pay hundreds of million dollars to the government to have the rights to open, operate certain frequency. So, and you take a loan. So over the next like 10 years, you pay the bank, slowly pay back the bank, the, the, the loan. So the asset that you have is actually the spectrum to operate at certain frequency. Then uh, once you own the spectrum, you have the rights or to sell your mobile plan, the internet plan, then you collect the monthly fee. So last time, mobile plan was like 40, 50, 60 dollars. In internet plan was like uh, the broadband was 50 dollars or what, yeah. Then subsequently, there's the fiber broadband, which they have to do a uh, high capex. So the telco business initially is actually high capex, where they get into a lot of debt. That's why the gearing was more than 100% uh, percent because they enter into fiber uh, or, and 4G or this. So they incur a lot of debt. Then secondly, right, 
And 2015, what made me decided to sell Starhub is that the competition, TPG came in as the fifth telco, I think in 2015. Then the Starhub started to, to fall. From $5, I think it dropped to $4. That's where I started to panic and I sold. I sold and it was the right decision. So I sold my Starhub at $4. I held it for five years. So I realized a capital gain of 100% and I collected 10% dividend yield uh, every year. So there's an annu uh, average annual return of 30%. So I made 30% uh, for every per year for five years or for Starhub or 150% return. So that's very good already, 30% annual return. So you want to make 20, 30% per year, you follow master. Master teach you how to make 20, 30% per year. You want to make 2S, 3S your money, 100% per year, 50% per year, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to make 50%, 100% a year. But I think I can make, I can compound my money at 20 or even 30%. So I, I make good money on, on the Starhub. Uh, then, then, uh, I sold it at four dollars. Both there was two worries. Number one is that their gearing is getting very high at more than hundred uh, percent. Then number two is that they are facing competition from TBG. So I was very lucky. I sold. Uh, now I think Starhub is like less than two dollar. Both increased competition. Then you don't have the pricing power now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm using M1. Uh, I don't even use Starhub. Uh, so M1 my mobile plan twenty dollar only. Then my internet plan forty dollar. Now it's much cheaper. It's good for the consumers, but it's bad for the uh, telco companies. Yeah, so, uh, Starhub. So, uh, the thing is, this gearing, uh, I think gearing is the one that actually worried me the, the most. So, instead of paying, the, continue paying the 5 cent dividend, right, they should actually lower down their debt. So, in the end, they faced with higher competition from TBG, right? Their, their debt level was unsustainable. So, they cut their dividends to, to reduce their gearing. So over the past few years, uh, Starhub, the dividends have been coming down. That's why the stock price come down. So one good reason to sell a, a stock, right, or, or to cut loss, right, is that the fundamentals have changed. Either the, the gearing has gone up too much or that uh, the competition has, is increasing sharply. So in terms of like gearing, right, like I often see comments, people say, Master, ah, CDL, uh, Capital, eh, no, City Development, Limited, uh, Kepper Corp, uh, Wilma, can buy or not? All this cannot buy la. I don't know you all listen to who eh. Don't buy la. See, the, all these three companies, they are very heavily geared. They should not be paying the dividend. They should pay down their debt. Wilma, the gearing is 80%. Kepper, the gearing is, uh, I think 90%. City Development, the gearing is 100%. These three companies, they are not dividend stocks. They are, they are gearing the debt level is very high. They should pay down their debt instead of uh, continue giving dividend. So CDL, Kepper, and uh, Wilma, just avoid them. The, the gearing is very high. Yeah. So sell, sell them, uh, sell them. Because the fundamentals is no good. Their, their debt keep increasing. Eventually, their, their dividends might be reduced if they have to pay, pay down their debt. Yeah, that, that's the big risk. So another reason that uh, we can sell a stock is that usually a stock decline, right, is because there's bad news. So we must see whether this negative, right, is a short-term issue or a long-term issue. If it's a long-term issue, a huge change in fundamentals, like what happened to Starhub, a huge increase in competition, then you want to cut loss and sell. So I cut loss and sell before a company, a REIT, uh, called Sabana. I cannot burn on Sabana REIT before. Yeah. And the wind is very strong. I think I, 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 I move over to, to another side. Yeah, it's just, just across only. Sea will be better or not. Yeah, the wind, don't know why today the wind so strong. I'm I afraid that it will affect the audio. Yeah, so sorry. La. The other side, the wind is very strong. So I move, move over to this bench. It's, it's more sunny, but I, I hope the wind is not that bad. Or oh, the wind is also very strong. Okay, so Sabana wheat. Oh, so, uh, oh banana wheat. So Sabana wheat. Uh, I think it was two zero one zero more than a decade ago. It IPO at one dollar. So all my numbers may be wrong, uh, because all this is more than a decade ago. So it IPO at one dollar. Then the dividend yield was eight percent. Then it had a very good uh, first five years. The first five years it will keep increasing their DPU because they have master lease on most of their asset. Where every year the rentals of their industrial asset, the rentals will step up like 3% or 4%. So the DPU keep increasing. Sabana was very popular. It went to as high as $1.20. I 
or because everyone was hungry for for dividend uh, and, and they like sabana wheat then sabana wheat dropped to 90 cents and i bought sabana wheat at 90 cents for a dividend yield of 10 percent i thought it was a value buy uh, discount to book value 10 percent dividend yield easy buy uh, and i thought it was a short-term issue was the dpo drop the nav drop because their master lease start to expire but wow end up it was a trap uh. so subsequently like you look at now sabana wheat i think is like 30 cents or or, or what uh. yeah so i bought it at 90 cents then i i thought it will recover like the dpu and the nav will stabilize but it didn't happen dpu continue to drop nav continue to drop and and at 80 cents level i sold and cut loss i took a 10 cent loss on sabana wheat because the nav and dpu keep falling so i went to dig deeper because that time i was still a new investor it's the master lease so when the ipo right they did like a five year six year seven year master lease on their different asset so the seller right basically promised that they they will pay a fixed amount of rental so the seller uh through the master lease right they we lend out the these properties to the tenant so the underlying tenant right they actually don't pay such a high lease the seller sold the assets to sabana at a very high price at an inflated price so they have this master lease to guarantee that you have this high eight percent uh, rental you so five years later when the master lease expire right then the seller have no liability to pay you this amount of rental so sabana own sell have to rent out to the underlying tenant and they ran out to the underlying tenant right the rental is much lower it's like 30 to 50 percent lower so can I scam already so when the ipo at an overvalued uh, valuation at a over at, at a using this creative accounting the U is higher than what we see yeah so i realized my mistake and i faster got out so i cut loss and, and took a 10 percent a 10, 10 cent loss la. then subsequently you see though after the next few years i was right every year the dpu and the nav keep dropping because the asset quality is no good and industrial uh assets in singapore the lifespan is very short just a 30 years uh lifespan only yeah so end up i learned my lesson sabana wheat la lipo more wheat la first wheat all this all of them the fundamentals are no good the sponsor is no good then the nav and the dpu keep dropping so when you invest in the wheat right you must ask that if the dpu drop the nav drop is it a short-term issue or is it a long-term issue so back to my original question master mpact mlt dpu drop there gone case ah. will dpu keep dropping or not or should cut loss or not my answer is no la. I, I believe that these are just short-term issues for mpact and mlt their long-term fundamentals are still solid they are the highest quality asset they have a very good sponsor with a good track record of growing uh, dpu uh, so short-term reads right they, they face two issues number one is the high interest rate environment number two is that their overseas asset are underperforming due to the global economic slowdown or uh, us is slowing down china has been slow over the past few years but china will start recovering so if, if china the stimulus is true next year consumer start spending start coming back then the china assets the rentals will start improving already so now is actually the best time to buy china assets yeah so i will be uh worry of u.s exposure so i'm not buying any companies that have heavy exposure to the u.s i don't want u.s asset yeah that's why i, I would want to buy like mit because they have like u.s data center or this i'm, I'm worried of a u.s slowdown like my five tiger general they are mostly uh, singapore exposure then mlt is japan and, and china exposure which I, I feel is okay yeah japan it's a worry la, whether they will explode or not but the exposure is not a lot I, i'm still okay la, because this blue chip is that they are still very uh diversified yeah so eventually because they are high quality assets right eventually the fundamentals will recover and the renters will start going up again then for the interest rate environment now we are being sold down because of the donald trump uh the possibility that donald trump will win i think donald trump will win i shared already now if donald trump doesn't win master will chop cucumber just kidding just kidding. entertainment only yeah so uh people believe that donald trump will win he will do the safety 60 percent tariffs on china and 10 percent tariffs on, on the rest of the world and this will be very inflationary not only to us but uh, to the world also so because of this policies that donald trump will launch then it might cause inflation to come back so instead of cutting rates then power might need to raise rates but even 
But you think fundamentally, right? Even if uh, Donald Trump is re-elected, uh, the Fed will still cut rates in 2025. They'll still cut because Donald Trump will not immediately implement these policies. Man. It takes time to be passed through Congress. In fact, Donald Trump, his first year, right, he need to unwind the misdeeds of uh, Biden. Example, like get Ukraine, Russia to sign a peace treaty to stop all the war and to cut the expenses. Then maybe the second year or third year onwards, then the tariffs will come into play. So 2025 rates are still coming down and rates will, will benefit. Lah. Longer term, there will be an equilibrium. Lah. That means interest rate will normalize. Lah. So interest rate won't normalize at 5%, lah, more like 3%. Lah. So the borrowing cost in the longer term will come down. It won't stay at 5% forever. Long term borrowing cost is, is more like 2.5% or 3%. So if you think long term, the risk, the blue chip risk, the borrowing cost will be much lower than, than today. Yeah, now the blue chip risk they are borrowing at 3.5 to 4 percent. Their borrowing cost should peak in the fourth quarter, and 2025 their borrowing cost should come down, or maybe towards 3 percent to 3.5 percent. Then the next year, their borrowing cost will, will normalize more towards 2.5 percent to 3 percent. The long term borrowing cost for blue chip risk we take it as 3 percent. Uh. Yeah, then uh. If their borrowing cost is lower, three percent as compared to now, three point five to four percent, their DPU should be higher. So going forward, two five and two six longer term, most of these blue chip weeks will see their DPU start to go up already. And also in two zero two five and two zero two six, gradually the DPU will start uh, growing again. So short term Q three and Q four results will be bad for the weeks, but it's the opportunity to buy and 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 I'm, I'm buying, yeah then. 2526 the results uh, should be much better yeah so to sum up my sharing today so uh, when to sell when to cut loss when when to sell sell when the fundamentals have changed for the long term if it's just a short-term issue hold or you might even to buy more then you sell when the company the gearing uh, keeps going up they're still paying dividend but they keep increasing their borrowing so the risk is that if they are getting reached to a point that is unsustainable, they might need to cut dividends to pay down that. So if their gearing is like 50% or less, it's not a worry. But they are gearing 80, 90, 100%. Like Wilma, 80% gearing. Keppel, 90% gearing. Uh, CDL, 100% gearing. You want to avoid them. The worry is that they might reduce dividends to start paying down their debt. Then you don't get the 5% yield. Like now Wilma, Keppel Corp, uh, you get 5% dividend yield, but their gearing is 80 and 90%. Why you want to buy them? It's stupid to buy them when their gearing is so high. You want to buy REITs. REITs, the gearing is 40%, yet they pay 5 to 6% dividend yield. Both also pay 5% dividend, but the Wilma and Kepa, the gearing is so high, double the amount of gearing. So it's a bad pick. La. It's stupid to buy Wilma and Kepa. Sorry to say that. La. If you like Kepler, you like an asset manager, buy CLI, Capital Land Invest. The gearing is 50%, but the dividend yield is lower, la, about 4%, but it's a mix of dividend and growth. So next week, I'll report the CICT and CRI results. I'll also report the DBS, OCBC, and UOB results. So a lot of the Singapore blue chip results. La. So like the Singapore market, uh, I will only buy REITs. La. Because the Singapore market, I want is the dividend. Singapore market is the best market for dividend because dividends is tax free. If you want capital gains, it's the Hong Kong market because Hong Kong market is really undervalued. La. Like, like Ping An, Ling Wiz, uh, Alibaba, they are still half price to book value. Even ICBC, all this, they can double. Oh, the wind is very strong. I think the storm is coming again. How come every time, every morning after my hike, the storm come? Yeah, so that's all my sharing for today. Have a good weekend. Take care all. Bye bye. Good morning, fire cat. <laughs> Scratch the tree, so cute.